Today is May the 12th. What's going to happen next? Let's find out together as we read Matthew chapter 23 to 25. As we read through the story of Jesus in the book of Matthew, we come to the Passion Week. Uh, among the last teaching that he gives, chapter 23 is called the chapter of the woes. Uh, woe to you, Pharisees, woe to you. And uh, he talks about those who uh, create false human burdens that actually keep people away from God instead of drawing them to God. And Jesus, at the end of that chapter, grieves over Jerusalem. Perhaps because of that, Jesus moves to the Mount of Olives. That's a mountain where before the Lord had been worshipped. Actually, sacrifices at one point were made on the Mount of Olives to the Lord. And Jesus begins to talk about the future. Chapters 24 and 25 are known as either the Olivet Discourse, the Sermon on the Mount of Olives, or the Little Apocalypse, because Jesus focuses on what happens next. What happens next? Well, we find out that Jesus says, even though in just a few days he will die, Jesus says, I will return. It's not at all clear to the disciples what Jesus is talking about. They still thought that he was going to be the messianic king right then and there. That was not his plan. The Messiah died on the cross. And the disciples were confused. It's important then for Jesus to tell them here in this section called the Little Apocalypse that he is coming back and he will deliver them. Matthew 23 through 25, New Living Translation, Matthew 23. Then Jesus said to the crowds and his disciples, The teachers of religious law and the Pharisees are the official interpreters of the law of Moses. So practice and obey whatever they tell you, but don't follow their example, for they don't practice what they teach. They crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. Everything they do is for show. On their arms, they wear extra-wide prayer boxes with scripture verses inside, and they wear robes with extra-long tassels. And they love to sit at the head table at banquets and in the seats of honor in the synagogues. They love to receive respectful greetings as they walk in the marketplace and to be called rabbi. Don't let anyone call you rabbi, for you have only one teacher, and all of you are equals as brothers and sisters. And don't address anyone here on the earth as father, for only God in heaven is your father. And don't let anyone call you teacher, for you have only one teacher, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be a servant. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees? Hypocrites, for you shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You won't go in yourselves, and you don't let others enter either. What sorrows await you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees? Hypocrites, for you cross land and sea to make one convert, and then you turn that person into twice the child of hell you yourselves are. Blind guides, what sorrow awaits you? For you say that it means nothing to swear by God's temple, but it is binding to swear by the gold in the temple. Blind fools, what is more important, the gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred? And what you say, that to swear by the altar is not binding, but to swear by the gifts on the altar is binding? How blind! For which is more important, the gifts on the altar or the altar that makes the gift sacred? When you swear by the altar, are you swearing by it and everything on it? And when you swear by the temple, are you swearing by it and by God who lives in it? 
And when you swear by heaven, are you swearing by the throne of God and by God who sits on the throne? What sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens, but you ignore the more important aspects of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. You should tithe, yes, but do not neglect the more important things. Blind guides, you strain your water so you don't accidentally swallow a gnat, but you swallow a camel. What sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but on the inside you are filthy, full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisees, first wash the inside of the cup and the dish, and then the outside will become clean too. What sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead people's bones and all sorts of impurity. Outwardly, you look like righteous people, but inward, your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. What sorrows await you, teachers of religious law and Pharisees? For you build tombs for the prophets your ancestors killed, and you decorate the monuments of the godly people your ancestors destroyed. Then you say, If we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would never have joined them in killing the prophets. But in saying that, you testify against yourselves that you are indeed the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Go ahead and finish what your ancestors started. Snakes, son of vipers, how will you escape the judgment of hell? Therefore I am sending you prophets and wise men and teachers of religious law. But you will kill some by crucifixion, and you will flog others with whips in your synagogues. Chasing them from city to city, as a result, you will be held responsible for the murder of all the godly people of all time. From the murder of righteous Abel to the murder of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you killed in the temple between the sanctuary and the altar. I tell you the truth, this judgment will fall on this very generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers, how often have I wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings. You wouldn't let me. And now, look, your house is abandoned and desolate. For I tell you this, you will never see me again until you say, Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. As Jesus was leaving the temple grounds, his disciples pointed out to him the various temple buildings, but he responded, Do you see all these buildings? I tell you the truth. They will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of another. Later, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, when will all this happen? What sign will signal your return and the end of the world? Jesus told them, Don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Messiah. They will deceive many. You will hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. But all this is only the first of the birth pains, with more to come. Then you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. You will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Sin will be rampant everywhere, and the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved, and the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world, so that all nations will hear it, and then the end will come. The day is coming when you will see what Daniel the prophet spoke about, the sacrilegious object that causes desecration standing in the holy place. Reader, pay attention. Then those in Judea must flee to the hills. The person out on the deck of a roof must not go down into the house or pack. A person out in the field must not return even to get a coat. 
how terrible it will be for pregnant women and for nursing mothers in those days, and pray that your flight will not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. For there will be greater anguish than at any time since the world began, and it will never be so great again. In fact, unless that time of calamity is shortened, not a single person will survive, but it will be shortened for the sake of God's chosen ones. Then, if anyone tells you, look, there is the Messiah, or there he is, don't believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen ones. See, I have warned you about this ahead of time. So if someone tells you, look, the Messiah is out in the desert, don't bother to go and look. Or, look, he is hiding there, don't believe it. For as the lightning flashes in the east and shines to the west, so it will be when the Son of Man comes. Just as the gathering of vultures shows there is a carcass nearby, so the signs indicate that the end is near. Immediately after the anguish of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will give no light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in heaven will be shaken. And then at last the sign that the Son of Man is coming will appear in the heavens, and there will be a deep mourning among all peoples of the earth. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with the mighty blast of a trumpet. And they will gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things, you can know his return is very near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. When the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered his boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. That is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. Two men will be working together in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding flour at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. So you, too, must keep watch for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. Understand this, if a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. But you also must be ready all the time, for the Son of Man will come when least expected. A faithful, sensible servant is one whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. I tell you the truth. The master will put the servant in charge of all he owns. But what if the servant is evil and thinks, my master won't be back for a while, and he begins beating the other servants, partying, and getting drunk? The master will return unannounced and unexpected, and he will cut the servant to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 25 Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids, who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight they were roused by a shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming, come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish one asked the others, Please, give us some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, We don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. 
Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, Believe me, I don't know you. So you, too, must keep watch, for you do not know the day or the hour of my return. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. He then left on his trip. The servant who received five bags of silver began to invest the money and earn five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, the master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money. The servant whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. The servant who received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned two more. The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's go celebrate together. Then the servant, with the one bag of silver, came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant! You knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate. Why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, Take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the ten bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into utter darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and gave you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? Then the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then the king will turn to those on his left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry, and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked, or sick in prison, and did not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth, when you refused to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me, and they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. Scripture Reading by Amelia Herrera 
Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Tomorrow, we'll look at the resurrection.